Hey there everyone, Mr. Lewis here, ready to dive into Unit 5 Language and AP Hug today. So the first couple things we're going to look at are indigenous languages and then language families. And we're starting there because it's really pivotal to understand the roots of all the languages that are spoken around the world today. So we're going to build up to the most common languages heard and spoken around the world today. But before that, we have to go to the foundations, the hearts of all of those languages. And this unit is really interesting because language is such a central part of our cultural identities, right? Who we are as people, as individuals, and there's so much regional distinctiveness with language, and it's something that people uh, hold near and dear to them, even when it might be easier to speak a different language, to learn a different language, to assimilate. People keep languages alive, and that shows you just how central it is to who we are as human beings. So, a uh, very important unit, and we're going to kick it off by covering those two sections today. So, let's take a look. All right, Unit 5, Language. Let's take a look. These are the six different sections we're going to study throughout the language unit. And, as I mentioned, we're just going to look at the first two today. So, 5.1 is Indigenous Languages, 5.2, Language Families. First indigenous languages. An indigenous language is one that is native to a particular region and is spoken by people who are indigenous to that same region. So indigenous languages in today's world are oftentimes endangered. Many indigenous languages have gone extinct and that's unfortunate and there's a huge movement to keep that from happening. Indigenous languages are so important to maintaining cultural diversity throughout the world and many people are starting to realize that and and it's gained a lot of momentum this movement over the last few years as people work to keep these indigenous languages alive. You can watch this video, this is pretty interesting, about indigenous languages in Australia and it's a quick video, you'll see it's only three minutes and 41 seconds long. Dwinian, and that means crocodile. My favorite mineral word is gai gai, which means grandma. My favorite word in mineral is the yoi job. It means swimming. So, pretty cool to see these kids in Australia learning this indigenous language that is unfortunately at risk of becoming an extinct language. And Australia has a lot of cultural diversity that often goes unnoticed because it has a lot of cultural influence from the British Empire. Language, ethnicity, much of that goes back to those roots under British rule. But there are many indigenous cultures that often go overlooked within the population of Australia. So take a look at the rest of that video. Very interesting stuff there, what people are doing to keep this language alive. You're also going to see another video later on about indigenous languages in Alaska and what people are doing there to ensure that these languages live many years after uh, the main speakers of them have passed along. So they're trying to get the younger generation to learn these languages and keep them alive. And that's very much what's happening in Australia as well. So, little game here. If you want to pause after I give you the instructions and try to do this on your own, I think that'd be a good idea. Basically, I'm just asking you to place these different indigenous languages of North America with the region in which they're indigenous. So, we've got six different language families here. There's Iroquoian, Suan, Uto Aztecan, Athabascan, Aleut, and Mayan. And I want to see if you can place each of these. So pay no mind to these instructions at the bottom. Obviously, we're not going to be drawing on our computer screens with an Expo marker here. That's more if this was up on the board. But you can go ahead and pause this for a second and see if you can place each of these six groups. There are a couple clues that might uh, tip you off to where we would find these indigenous languages, and we're really referencing mainly where the language families would have been spoken before 
European settlement in North America. So if you want to pause for a second, you can go ahead and do that and try to place these. But I am going to continue. So Iroquoian languages are mostly in the northeast part of the United States. So over in, uh, in general, northeast uh, North America, but not all the way up here into the northeastern parts of Canada, more along the uh, uh, northeastern coast of the United States. Suan languages are really dominant in the Midwest and up into the Great Plains area here. So the Great Lakes, which is the region in which we live here in Crown Point, Indiana, we're at the bottom of Lake Michigan, the Great Lakes were really dominated language-wise by these two language families. Uto Aztecan, uh, there's a couple clues in there. One is Uto. So uh, we have a state that is actually um, derived, its name is derived from this nation of Native Americans, the Ute uh, uh, nation. And there is still a Ute reservation, but it's not in Utah. It's close to Utah. It's in Colorado, but uh, this is where the name Utah actually has its roots. And uh, Uto Aztecan languages were found in that region of the country, but also south into the western parts of Mexico. Athabascan languages were the dominant language family found and still are the dominant language family found uh, among indigenous people in the northwest regions of North America. So as we get up into northwest Canada, uh, in those territories and uh, major parts of, major swaths of Alaska, um, that's where you would be likely to hear the Athabascan language still spoken, or, or a number of Athabascan languages, I should say. The Aleut language, which is a family in itself, but it really just consists of one language, is the indigenous language to the western banks of Alaska. And the video that you're going to watch actually deals with um, some of the languages, again, the indigenous languages that are spoken in Alaska. So um, many interesting things happening in Alaska to keep those indigenous languages alive. And then finally, Mayan languages. You might uh, have been able to predict this based on your history knowledge is in mostly Central America and Southern Mexico. So uh, the Mayan language was um, the southernmost of these families. But kind of interesting to see the indigenous languages before European settlement in North America and uh, where they were located. But there are many different language families, right? And these families are quite extensive. Some are a little more simplified and don't have as many branches and different languages within them. But a language family itself is a group of languages that are connected through a common ancestor language, a common root, a common hearth, which is usually simply an indigenous language. And there are many different language families we see around the world today that are used by millions or perhaps even billions of people. In the Americas, one of those language families is the Indo-European language family, which started, as the name indicates, between India and Europe, really in what would uh, today be Turkey, and from the Indo-European proto-language, which was the original Indo-European language, we get all these different languages that are heard and spoken around the world today, English, Spanish, German, and many others. The other main language family we see in the Americas is Amerindian, and these are really indigenous uh, languages to the Americas. And as you can see, they're mostly spoken in areas today that were left predominantly unsettled by Europeans because they had a harsher landscape. So as you get closer to the Arctic, there are many indigenous languages that have survived because English has not been as pervasive there. Uh, down in South America, as you get into the jungles of the Amazon, for example, where the landscape was a little bit more difficult to settle English, excuse me, uh, Portuguese, or uh, in some cases Spanish in South America, was not as pervasive. And so those indigenous languages were, have been able to survive. Um, in Africa, there are two main, uh, and you can see the distinct difference here, there are two main language families that are predominantly spoken today. In sub-Saharan Africa, 
They are indigenous African languages. In North Africa, in the Sahara, we see Afro-Asiatic languages predominantly spoken, and that's in the Arabian Peninsula as well. So mostly that would be Arabic, but again, it's another example of this distinct cultural difference between North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. In Europe, there are many different languages spoken, but most of them fall into the Indo-European family. As we move out east, you can see in Russia, there's uh, a lot of Indo-European, but also a lot of Euro-Asiatic. And then in China and Southeast Asia, mostly Sino-Tibetan, which predominantly is Mandarin. Mandarin is the most commonly spoken language in that region of the world, and uh, it falls under the Sino-Tibetan language family. So we'll be looking closer at each of these language families as the unit goes on, but uh, gives you an idea of which ones are predominantly um, seen and heard and spoken around the world today. Remember, Central Africa is really the hearth of all early language. That's something that occasionally comes up, and uh, that is where we find the earliest uh, evidence of language used. So that is the original hearth, so to speak. Here's an example of a language family tree, and you can see here the Proto-Indo-European language on top as the indigenous language, the primary language, uh, the root language of all of these others that follow it. And it's quite extensive from Germanic languages to Hellenic languages, really that becomes Greek, uh, Celtic languages, uh, Italic languages, which all fall under Latin. And here's what's interesting about that. The Romans spoke Latin. So all of these languages that are derived from Latin, Italian, Portuguese, Spanish, French, these are considered Romance languages. And that's a nod back to the Romans. And uh, up here, Balto-Slavic, you can see Polish, Russian, um, and uh, Serbo-Croatian languages. And so it's quite extensive. If we find English all the way down here and follow back its roots, English is a Germanic language. So it's kind of interesting. You can always follow these roots back and see where uh, different languages um, found their, their roots and, and where they were derived from over the years. Pretty interesting stuff. So that's it for sections 5.1 and 5.2. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you for section 5.3 next time. See you, everyone.